Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Build Your Presence webinar today. Uh, my name is Malti. I'm the founder of Luxury Presence, and I'm thrilled to be here to talk about eight strategies that you can use to set yourself apart uh, from the competition. I've been in real estate since 2015. I got my start working uh, on marketing uh, strategies for Jade Mills, who's the number one agent for a coal banker globally. Um, I helped build her marketing strategy, including her SEO, her content, her social media. And out of that experience, Luxury Presence was born. And since then, we've grown uh, the company to over 500 team members. We now serve uh, over 7,000 customers uh, all across the country, and we support over 20 of the Wall Street Journal top 100 agents and teams. Uh, with their marketing. And so a lot of what we'll be talking about today is based on uh, the experience over the last few years, uh, working with many of the top agents and seeing what uh, a lot of the best agents do uh, with their marketing to set themselves apart. Uh, I have Bally here with me as well. He is one of our product marketing managers uh, who also has experience as an agent in a previous career. career. He worked in LA and Malibu and uh, I'm very excited to have him uh, share some, some of the strategies that we've developed. Um, what we wanna do today is share um, eight strategies that are unique and underutilized so uh, that you can have an edge going into 2023. And I'm confident that by the end of this webinar, you should have several new tools uh, and ideas that you can use and put into practice right away. So stick around till the end uh, to get the most out of it. Before we get started, uh, please mute your microphone, uh, and if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please use the chat to post those, and then we'll answer them uh, at the very end during the Q&A. Um, all right, let's get started. So I want to set the scene. Um, you all work in uh, one of the most competitive industries there is. Uh, the numbers make that very clear. Over the last 10 years, uh, the number of licensed realtors has grown by 500,000 uh, currently, it's at 1.6 million nationally, and uh, uh, mortgage rates, um, of course, have remain remain elevated. Uh, we know that the forecasts for next year indicate that there will be fewer transactions and that uh, home price prices may uh, decline. And uh, as a result of that, we can expect next year to be even more competitive than this year has been. Um, so what we want to do is think about ways and share some uh, practices and some strategies that you can use uh, to really set yourself apart and set yourself up for success in this more competitive market. Um, since next year will be a, a critical year, uh, likely for, for many, where you can pull ahead and take market share um, or fall behind. Um, now, we know that uh, challenging markets typically favor more experienced agents. Um, and so... Uh, the strategies that we're going to talk about are strategies that uh, experienced agents uh, typically use, and uh, we've crafted this to uh, um, to be for uh, both top producing agents who are already at the top of the market, um, agents who are uh, who have a growth mindset and want to perhaps break into a higher price range, take their business to the next level, and then of course uh, team leads and marketing directors as well. Um, all right, so I'm going to hand it over to Bally to uh, talk about the first two strategies we want to share. Awesome. Thank you, Marty. Um, all right, let's kick it off with the first strategy. Um, and this one is adding a marketing process page uh, to your website. So when potential clients visit your website, you know, they're looking for information about you and specifically uh, what you can do for them. Um, your website can be a place where you display full transparency into your personal brand and business. Um, if you already have a page for sellers on your site, you most, most likely do, um, why not go a level deeper and give people an inside look into your marketing process and how the whole operation um, works? And, you know, you may not think of this as, as much, but it can really help convert more visitors. Um, when prospects understand how you market a home from the, the, the details, the weeds, the nitty gritty, from the in initial photos and videos to the open houses and, and, and the ad campaigns, for example, they're that much uh, more likely to trust your expertise in helping them with their real estate needs. Um, plus, by having this page on your website, you can set yourself apart 
from other agents who may not be providing that kind of detail. And I don't see many, in, in, in my experience, agents um, going into the weeds about their process. Uh, so showing the prospects how you go above and beyond for each of your listings puts you already heads and shoulders above above the competition and gives, gives um, clients the confidence uh, that their home is in good hands. Um, let's take a look at a couple of good examples that I found. So here's, um, here's a page that's broken down the process really well. Um, there's lots of content on this page, um, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. You know, it starts with an opening statement from the team and an amazing team photo. I'll certainly remember that one. Um, and it's going to, um, you scroll down a little further, it starts breaking down the individual phases, um, breaking down the pre-listing process steps as clearly as possible. Um, going into um, phase two and three, this um, alternating block and text layout um, helps create balance. Uh, it, it gives the opportunity to add visuals and frankly keeps uh, people scrolling and on the page. Um, and you know, even even down here, when you get into the escrow process, like this is this is genius. It's a it's a flow chart breaking down uh, a typically daunting process for most because they don't understand it all, and and they're fully entrusting the professionals. You know, flow chart like this is not only creative and and really easy to read, but can help people feel much more comfortable. Um, it's a genius move. And then ending with a a real life example of how how they market their listings and and the impact that it can have. Um, this is one page, but going in deeper, even more, uh, Jill Gelman here, or Kim Gelman, sorry, um, she goes into more details about the tools and, and resources she uses to market a property, you know, her philosophy on photography, the tools that she uses, um, the brochures, the print marketing, even going in deeper into the, into the channels and the ads and the creatives that she uses, um, it's great. It, it will show um, it will show your prospects that you're a knowledgeable agent who they can trust. But it, it kind of takes away the uh, the fear of the unknown when when you can see exactly what she does, the philosophy behind why she does it, and and then there's no there's no stone left unturned. You can see exactly what she does to push your home, uh, push your clients' homes, and then and uh, it it creates more trust and more um, confidence. In, in the agent um, and a lot of clients aren't really doing this um, it's a great strategy and I think it's 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 worth exploring if you haven't if you haven't done that on your site already um, you can take the the property websites the strategy number two here you can take the property websites on your for your listings um, a, a little deeper also um, this is another area where agents can get ahead um, a lot of agents are working hard and and actively searching for ways to stand out in that sea of sameness. Um, and especially if you've been working for a few years and, and you're already gaining traction in wealthy markets and, and price points, seller expectations also tend to increase with that. Um, they express concerns. You might be too busy or you have too many listings. And you had a question, you know, what will you do for me? Uh, far too often. So Building individual websites for your properties, you already know, can be a great way to appease sellers and, and showcase the unique qualities and draw attention um, from buyers and sellers. But it also allows you to tell a better story. Um, it allows you to market a property and its features. You can include descriptions, longer descriptions um, of unique aspects of the home, more photographs, um, virtual tours. It, it makes it easier to share details about each property in a manner which is engaging and informative, helping to boost interest from potential clients. Um, but on top of that, Google tends to rank these kind of property sites, these single property websites higher. Um, and why is that? It's, it's because they're very specific. They tend to drive the user to take an action. It keeps, they keep people on the site for longer. Um, it's just generally more engaging, more value to the people on the page. And, and Google recognizes that. So if you're not already building dedicated websites for your properties, it's worth considering. Um, I'm sure you're really aware of, of other property website tools out there, um, but we decided to take a lot of our client feedback and, and build our own. Um, if you already have a luxury presence website and you haven't tried out our self-serve uh, property websites yet, go give it a go. Um, but yeah, if you go to the next slide, you'll see how quick and easy it is um, to do it through our platform. All of, all of the um, details of your listings are pulled from your dashboard and within seconds you have a live preview that you can double check and then publish online. It takes literally 30 seconds. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, you'll be able to see what the final 
um, product looks like. Um, it's an elegant property site, um, information displayed clearly, nice subtle motion, keeps things engaging, keeps people on the page. Um, but really, we we built this so our clients don't have to take the time uh, with third party vendors uh, or learn the technical chops to become a power user. You know, this is for all the agents that need something fast and free, and um, it will impress uh, your sellers and attract buyers. Uh, it really is a strategy worth considering for 2023. Um, I'll kick it back to Multi for, for, for the next one. Thanks, Bradley. Uh, the next strategy I want to talk about is using QR codes to turn in-person interactions into website visitors. And over the last couple of years, um, QR codes have become very commonplace. Um, consumers have gotten used to it during the pandemic. You've probably all used them in restaurants to pull up menus. And so uh, they know how to use them now, which means uh, we all can use them in our marketing in really creative ways. And we've seen agents do that. And uh, I'm going to share some examples here in a second. But the reason why it works so well is because it allows you to um, take in-person interactions and then uh, have a QR code that you can print uh, on materials and point it back to uh, a page on your website and capture the contact information, measure the success of your offline marketing, your print marketing, um, and then uh, ultimately drive more traffic to your website. And so uh, let's look at some ways that uh, uh, you can do this. Um, one might be to create a, a QR code that you put on your listing materials or an open house sign. And you can point those specific QR codes uh, to either the listing page on your website, or you can point it to a standalone single property website, um, like the one that Bally just showed. Um, so this is a great way to capture demand for a particular listing and then show them uh, uh, and then capture that contact information online, the, the buyer lead. Um, the second uh, option is to uh, use them strategically uh, at events. So this is uh, a great option if you're doing any type of community events, if you're going to conventions, networking events, um, or if you're sponsoring events, using QR codes uh, through those materials. Again, great way to convert some of those uh, offline activities into uh, traffic to your website. And then if you're partnering with uh, local businesses or with influencers, uh, QR codes are a good way uh, for them to um, feature in their videos and pictures uh, or in their marketing materials um, to uh, drive traffic back to your website. And then lastly, if you're doing anything with uh, t-shirts or, or bags or other promotional items, um, again, featuring QR codes can be a good way to, to capture some of that traffic as well. Um, let's look at two examples here. Um, so the first one, is a is a print ad and you can see um if you if you uh, scan the qr code there it takes you to the website to the listings on the website um yeah you can see it there um and then the second example here really? is really all right folks come on in and check our new office here we've been working on this for a while we've got some really cool stuff we've got this is our new touch screen which I don't, I haven't really seen this anywhere else. So you can just hit our properties here, then go to our listings, and then you'll scroll into our, our listings that are currently on the market. Killer house here up in the San Juan Islands. It's a great house here on Palmero. Awesome views, Mediterranean. Uh, our beautiful new French home. You can, you can search all homes on the whole Monterey Peninsula, so they all pop up. This is the most expensive home on the market now, the old basic instinct house. Touch it, gives you full full access to the property. So it's really cool. Um, you can also scan um, and search all homes uh, from your phone. And for our sellers, you know, it's awesome because we're displaying their properties right here at the lodge, which is really, this is this is the best event. I mean, the people that are staying at the lodge here average spend per day is of a couple of thousand dollars. So there are typical buyers. And you know we can just they can come here and just scroll through our listings. So we really feature that. No other real estate company is doing that. And then over here, we've got. This um, is we'll we'll stop here, right. but you can see how um, uh, the QR code is used here. And if you scan it, or if a uh, someone walking by scans it, it takes them to the listing portfolio on their website. Um, so just a really creative way to use QR codes here. Um, the next strategy I want to talk about is using digital presentations 
to uh, build trust with prospects um, and going into listing appointments. So most of you, um, if you're going into listing appointments, are, uh, I'm sure, printing out PDFs, you're sharing those, doing after your listing appointments. And the problem with that is that that's what everyone is doing, right? Um, and so uh, what I want to talk about is creating a, a digital version of your listing presentation. Um, and you can use it, do this on third-party platforms like Pitch or Canva, or you can do it on the Luxury Presence platform, um, which has the, the advantage of our built-in CMA tool. But um, the goal of a listing presentation, right, is to create a memorable and highly engaging experience that conveys how you're different from everyone else. And so that's why uh, a digital version of your presentation can be so effective um, because you can use videos and you can use interactive elements to better convey your personality and your style. Um, so uh, I suggest that you think of your presentation as an opportunity to build a relationship and to be authentic, not just a sales pitch. Um, when you do that and when you talk about um, yourself, your passions, what makes you unique, and you come across as confident and genuine, um, you generally will see better results with the listing presentations that you're doing. A, a great presentation typically will highlight uh, your unique focus, uh, your community involvement, other things you're passionate about outside of real estate. Uh, we all know people want to uh, work with people they like and trust. And so uh, we recommend that you um, really share as much of your personality um, as possible. Um, one great way to do that is through video and through embedding video in your digital presentation. Um, and I want to share show an example uh, here of an agent who's done that uh, really, really well. So uh, we'll uh, pull that up here. Hi, Adrian. Hey, welcome to Sunny Noe Valley. That's a really beautiful facade. I believe that's what they mean when they say curb appeal. When was this gorgeous Victorian renovated? Brand new renovation, ready for a happy owner. How many beds and baths? Four beds and four baths on two levels. And a garage? Yes, of course. Space for three cars with the additional parking pad. Why don't you show us around? Yeah, come right this way. Is this the living room? It is. It's the first gorgeous room you see when you enter the home. I love the bay window and cozy fireplace. I know, so much charm in here. And you get to look out at a canopy of trees. And down the hall? So down the hall is the kitchen and dining, creating functional separation between the living spaces. Wow, what a kitchen. Stunning, right? High-end gas stove and appliances. And a wine fridge? Of course, right behind you. And plenty of counter space for that inner Michelin-style chef. I love that it leads straight outdoors. Yeah, we'll, I know. we'll stop here. Beautiful uh, sun you the, nook. You get the, the point. It's uh, a fantastic video, right? Uh, we're seeing um, his personality, um, I like the call and response format. It's a nice touch. It's engaging. It moves quickly. And you get a sense of um, who the agent is and what their personality is like. Um, you can use these uh, digital presentations, not just for listing presentations, but um, as lead magnets. You can use them as guides. You can use them to uh, present your brand or your business to new prospects, leads that are finding you on the website. Um, the sky is really the limit. You can get really, really creative. Um, that's why it's such a a great tool. Um, if you haven't taken a look at our digital presentation on the Luxury Presence platform yet, um, and you're, you're a client, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Um, you can pull in listing information, you can create CMAs, um, there's a lot you can do with the tool. Now, uh, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about um, how you can market, uh, especially your high-end listings. Um, so the next strategy I want to talk about is using uh, networks and global listing feeds to increase the distribution for your listing. Um, this uh, strategy can be used to uh, increase the visibility for your listings and to drive more referrals. And uh, as you all know, uh, real estate is more global and connected than ever. And sellers, especially in the luxury market, uh, expect to uh, have their listing marketed, not just in the local market, but beyond it and even internationally. And so if you're in the luxury market or you're looking to break into the luxury market, uh, your ability to market listings um, nationally and internationally uh, is something that can set you apart. Um, and listing networks can be a great way to do that. Uh, this strategy has several benefits. Um, you can increase the visibility of your listings around the country, attracting more buyer leads. Uh, you can use it to talk about your reach during listing appointments to set yourself apart. 
um, to highlight your reach, your national connections. Um, and then lastly, it allows you to pull in global listing inventory on your website to create your own global brand so that uh, the people in your sphere uh, perceive your brand as uh, nationally and globally collected, uh, connected, and you have more uh, people coming to you for referrals. So uh, the way that this works um, on our platform is we have a, a listing networks feature where you can uh, yeah, sign up for any of the listing networks on our platform. There are over 50 of them. Uh, national listing, not national luxury network is an example. California migration network is another one. And uh, once you subscribe to a listing feed um, or to a network, you can share your listings to it and it will show up on the websites of the other network members. And you can pull in their listings and show them an inventory on your own website. Um, so by joining a real estate network like this, uh, you can open up uh, a whole new world of possibilities. Um, for your business and for your listings and connect with other agents around the country um, and use it to, again, drive more visibility for your listings. Um, use it as a tool to uh, um, set yourself apart in listing appointments um, and to drive more referrals. Um, over to Bali for the next one. Thanks, Motsi. Yeah, the, the listing networks thing is great because... Uh... That, that's a pro tip right there, right? Including a slide in your listing presentation about that network. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a good one. Um, okay, cool. Let me jump in on, on how to use data. Um, and sometimes it could be seen as quite boring, but it's leaning in on data and, and being able to display it in um, a visual and easily digestible day, uh, just digestible way um, can be a bit of a secret weapon. Uh, visualizing data provides viewers with a more comprehensive view of market trends um, and helps them make better decisions ultimately. Um, it also allows you to quickly show off your expertise in the field. Um, when, when potential clients are given information in this in this sort of concise um, format, they often feel more confident um, about their decision to work with you. And it's just a little bit refreshing. Like you see, you see listings and you see beautiful pictures of homes and stuff, but not many agents using data in a, in a nice way. Um, it's just efficient. It's, it's a good way to tell stories about the market without taking up too much time um, or effort. Um, and by providing, by providing uh, insights into market trends in this way, you'll be able to help people understand um, complicated concepts quickly and accurately. Uh, something that potential buyers and sellers pretty much appreciate where time is of the essence. Um, one way to inject some visual data into your site is, is on a neighborhood page or, or an area guide. Um, from an SEO perspective, Neighborhood guides on a website are a great way to drive traffic to your site. And, and they're also another secret weapon for increasing your rankings in Google. Um, that's because these pages are they're designed to be large pieces of content that covers all aspects of that topic or that neighborhood on a, on a single page with additional links and backlinks to other relevant pages on the site, like a blog, like a blog post or other relevant uh, bits of data and content. Um, but the whole point is we want to keep people clicking around your site, keep people on this page. Um, and, and that's why we built some data elements for our customers to you know, include on their neighborhood pages. So in this, uh, in this slide here, we can, um, you can we play it again, Brandon, you can see um, the elements that we created to help with just this. Um, they're, they're designed to be easily digestible and updated automatically. They're interactive. Um, so you can click on the buttons and see the additional data. Um, and here's another pro tip, the, the image um, that I'm on the slide before, just before this was a screenshot of the data on this page, which I can now repurpose and, and share on social media or in an email. Um, visual data like this, especially in, in like a carousel post on social media, great for boosting engagement. And, and um, by sharing these interesting visuals with followers, you can draw attention to the post and encourage more people to engage ultimately driving people back to your website and converting more visitors. We don't see many agents using data like this. Um, take advantage of it, stand out from the crowd um, and ultimately incorporating visual data into your marketing strategy could be a great way to differentiate yourselves um, from other agents that aren't doing this. You know, some agents love to lean in on that. They're, they're secretly data nerds and, and this could be your thing. Um, this could 
uh, help you stand out as someone who's knowledgeable and trustworthy. And um, you'll also be known as, as a resource for using these kind of cutting edge market insights. And if it does end up becoming your thing, people will come to you um, when they want the most up-to-date information. And, and it's, that's not because they can't find the information anywhere else. It's because they will want to know your take on it. Um, they want to hear it in your voice, um, giving you that edge. That's, that's, that's what they want. They want to they hear it from you. Um, yeah, it's a good one. Uh, neighborhood data is, is um, or using data in visual ways is a, is a fantastic way to, to stand out from the crowd. Um, let's go to the next one. This is, a, this is a good one. I like this one. Pop-up forms. Um, divided, I think, across the board with clients that I've worked with. Some people don't like using pop-ups. Others are all for it. Um, and you already know as, as a real estate agent that success in the industry means always looking for new ways to capture leads, right? So leads are the lifeblood of the business. So, you know, so why not leverage uh, the power of exit intent pop-ups specifically? They're my favorite um, on your websites to, to, to maximize lead capture. And I like um, exit intent pop-up forms because they take advantage of a user's natural behavior uh, when leaving a site. So by displaying a form when a user is about to leave, um, there's a greater chance that the user will fill it out. Uh, it's just because they're already in the process of exiting. So they may feel as if they've got nothing to lose by taking a few extra seconds. Um, but also the form will only appear when, when the user has already taken the time to view the contents of the page, um, indicating a higher level of interest in the content already. They've already been there. They've already been clicking around. So yeah, it may seem intrusive and annoying at first, uh, but studies have proven time and time again that these forms are incredibly effective in converting visitors who would have otherwise just left your site without taking any action. Uh, and don't let that intrusive nature of these forms turn you away. Um, embrace their power uh, with, with a little thoughtfulness in crafting your forms and messages. Um, you'll be able to stand out and make the most of this powerful tool. Take the time um, to craft messaging and visuals that speaks directly to your target audience. Um, let people be engaged until the very last second. Uh, leverage this tool to maximize those leads before they're, they're gone for good. And so here I broke this down into some things you can consider uh, when creating these pop-ups. Um, when I mean, you know, be thoughtful and take the time, look at these individual things and, and really craft the message to, to help that conversion happen. So for design, for a great user experience, make sure your pop-up is clear, easy to scan, optimized for mobile devices. Um, you also want to make sure that this, this design and aesthetic fit with the general look and feel of your website. There's no point in having a, a bright red background if, if you don't have red anywhere else on the site. Um, make sure that people can clearly see where that X is to close it. We're not here to enrage people. You know, we want to we want to provide value. Um, and then messaging is, is important. You know, craft an impactful headline and use concise language. Um, to create an exit intent pop-up that communicates a clear, beneficial message. Um, ensure that it offers a helpful solution to your visitors um, and presents in, uh, an effective way of solving a problem for them. Um, we're, not, we're not trying to just um, get a lead just for the sake of it. We want to we solve their problems. We want to give them a reason to put their details in. Um, and let's not forget about the image. You know, For the best results, choose an exit intent image that's both relevant to your offer and engaging for your target audience. That means keep it eye-catching, but not overly distracting. So it's not to take away from your offer. Um, and then lastly, the, the call to action, the CTA, the button, um, motivate your audience and make it easy uh, for them to understand your call to action. Incorporate unique, relevant phrases, maybe something that will actually come out of your mouth that reflects your brand into your offer for, for maximum impact. Um, I found a good example. Uh, oh, Tim Ferriss uses a good one. Um, if you if you don't know who Tim Ferriss is, he's he's a a well known lifestyle guru, and uh, people generally want to know what his secret is to success. I know I do. Um, and here he has a, a powerful headline, a simple offer, a picture of him, you know, standing there looking like what you're waiting for, um, and it's just it makes me want to click it. It makes me want to click it. And it, it, just like this, you have the power to make a lasting impression with every website visitor. Um, just make sure that what you're offering in exchange for their email 
is always of value um, and always remember, you know, what's what's in it for them. Why why should they click it? Why should they give their information up? Um, but out of all the pop-ups and, and ways a pop-up could come up on your site, exit intent is great because the mouse goes up to the to the browser as they're looking to leave and um, and then it pops up right there and then. So they've already had a chance to explore your website. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to stand out. Um, back to Malti, I think, to talk about uh, the brand. Thanks, Bally. Yeah, the, the last strategy we wanna highlight here is to create um, a visual um, customized look and feel that represents your brand. And uh, we believe that your personal brand and your reputation uh, is the most important thing for long-term success in this business, uh, especially if you're working in the luxury market. And we recommend building a visual, visually unique and differentiated brand, and then a custom website that matches that brand. We see a lot of agents during this time of year revamp their brand identity um, and their website, um, especially when things are slower. This is actually a, a great time to, to focus on uh, your branding. And uh, the first step generally is to define your brand and to create the visual identity. And then the second step is to reflect that brand on your website so that everything looks consistent. Uh, having a custom website is an amazing way to tell your story and to make your brand shine. Um, and when you create a customized website that expresses your exact vision, uh, you tend to build a lot of credibility and again, stand out uh, in competitive markets. So what should you be thinking about when designing your visual identity? Um, of course, colors and fonts both play a huge part in this. Um, and when you create uh, a color palette for your personal brand, start by thinking about what colors best represent you. Uh, what kind of feelings do these colors evoke? Uh, do they reflect the values of who you are as an individual or who you are as a business? And the good news is there are plenty of resources out there to help guide you in some of these decisions. Um, one thing I would recommend is to think about the psychology behind colors um, and the corresponding emotions. So for example, uh, red often represents uh, passion and energy. Blue tends to inspire trust. Green is associated with growth. Uh, purple stands for creativity, um, et cetera. So consider which emotions or feelings you want to evoke with your personal brand um, and use that as a starting point for choosing the right colors. Uh, you can also look at some of the top brands in your industry um, or in other industries. Uh, I often find a lot of my inspiration from uh, outside of real estate, look at architecture, uh, look at lifestyle, um, hospitality um, to get inspiration um, and uh, use that to then um, craft the vision and, and define it for what you want your brand to look like. Uh, you can also check out some color palettes that are available online. There's some, some really cool tools. One is uh, the uh, Adobe color tool. One is called uh, Coolers. It's C-O-O-L-O-R-S, uh, where you can generate different color palettes and pay, play around with that. Um, so that's a, a good way to get inspired. Um, in addition to selecting the right colors, of course, your uh, fonts and your font palette uh, is really critical to getting your visual identity right. Um, and this is where you can really have fun find fonts that are uh, different, that stand out, um, and that really reflect your unique personality and your business. And uh, if you carefully select these design elements and put them together into a cohesive palette of colors and fonts, you can create a strong visual identity um, that stands out and hopefully connects with your target audience um, in a meaningful way. Uh, one last thing I would recommend is just keeping things consistent. So. Uh, once you define your brand, making sure that um, all of your materials, all of your ads, your website, everything looks cohesive and has the same exact look and feel, and that you sound consistent across those platforms as well, so people recognize you wherever they come across your brand. Um, lastly, I, I want to um, call out uh, something exciting on our end. Uh, we, it's a big day, actually, for us. We are launching a new custom branding and website design offering. Um, so if you are interested in working with a top-notch creative team directly one-on-one to help create uh, your custom brand, your logos, um, or, your, or a custom website to match your existing identity, um, then this is worth checking out. Um, it's a program where we create a 100% unique uh, brand for your business. And you can see an example here on the next slide of um, some of the work we've done in the past. 
with that, I will open it up for questions. And if anybody wants to come up and 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 talk, we can bring you guys up as well. Um, and we have some questions in the Q and A, which we we'll probably jump into. But does anybody anybody want to come up and and have uh, have a little chat with us? If not, we can uh, we can jump into to one of the questions here in the Q and A. So we got Carla Knight here. Can we use videos from previous listings? to show experience. Um, what do you think, Malti? Yeah, why not? It's um, it's it's a, it's a great, especially if it's a good one. And I guess probably get permission from just to use the content. But uh, if you have that permission, it's it's fantastic. I think it's a great way to show personality, especially if it's a good piece of content. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. And uh, we've seen agents create uh, success stories um, or case studies on their website. Um, and so this can be a great way if you have a listing where uh, you created a video, you did the marketing, um, having a dedicated page that talks about um, you know, what Bally mentioned earlier and including you know, the video, I think is, is a great way. Nice. Um, Ruben, would you want to come up? Let's see if we can bring you up here. Is that working? Hey, while we while we figure that out, um, I'll just get to the next question. Does LP have a way for us to create QR codes for our site pages? Great question. It's a it's a, it's a good feature request actually right there. Um, I don't think we currently have a way, right, Marty? Um, but there's plenty of plenty of free resources out there. Uh, you can get really creative. Just type in QR code generator um, into Google, and you'll see a bunch of websites pop up. You can change the colors, the shapes, um, the fonts, the, the frame around the QR code, um, and you can get really creative with, with the QR codes. It's still it's still an untapped territory. Like you saw it in the Super Bowl, where some of the brands and and the the they were had it in the videos, right? You had Coinbase that came up with with a big one. Um, there's there's loads of creative ways to use these. Uh, we don't have a tool ourselves right now, but plenty of ways to incorporate into your site. Um, did you have any other thoughts on on QR codes, Malti? No, I would just uh, I would just uh, use any of the the free tools that are available, and then um, you can build the uh, the landing pages for it on on the Luxury Presence platform or wherever you're you're hosting your website. Perfect, Ruben. I think you 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 have um, the ability to talk if you wanted to ask the question. Do you want to try giving that a go? Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I have two questions. One, um, I already have a website from an, from one of your competitors. Uh, will I be able to? Would your company be able to create um, the the neighborhood page into the website that I already have with this other company? And uh, number two, um, how much it will cost, and if I can be a member of uh, the network of agents that your company has created. Yeah. Um, Malti, do you want to take that one? Yeah. So the the answer to your first question, um, we you you wouldn't be able to um, embed our neighborhood data tool and elements on a third party website. Um, it's built specifically for for luxury presence websites. Um, but I would check with your provider and see perhaps they have um, a similar solution where you know neighborhood data is available. Um, and then to answer your second question, uh, to join uh, a network, if you're on the Luxury Presence platform, you can, uh, we have over 50 networks on our platform that you can request to join that's included with our uh, base website subscription. And so you have access to that tool um, on any of our plans uh, if you have a Luxury Presence website. Okay, so basically you won't be able to, like for, for, for the neighborhoods, you won't be able to do, you won't have a, a copyright or somebody who can help me to, to have that data uh, for me? Um, we, we do offer uh, copywriting services and uh, we can help with area guides, neighborhood guides, that type of content um, that is, is a service we offer. Um, so I would uh, recommend uh, you can, uh, if you screen actually the QR code on the screen right now, it'll bring up a form 
If you fill that out, um, someone from our team will be in touch and then they can give you an overview of, of everything that's available. All right, thank you. Thanks for the, the questions, Ruben. Thanks, Ruben. Um, Eva, I think, uh, I think you're up next. Hi there, thanks for bringing me on. Uh, my question actually piggybacks a little bit on what uh, Ruben was speaking about as well. So um, I already have the neighborhood or community pages built into my site, but they have no content. Um, and now I would love to be able to bridge that gap and add the data. So should I just, you know, basically what you were saying, go onto the QR code, um, how do I go about, do I need to provide that neighborhood data or um, because my brokerage site that I have separate auto populates all of that information. Um, I'm not sure what service they're using, but how do I go about doing uh, the same sort of feature on the luxury presence site? Yeah, Bell, you want to take that one? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's uh, if, if you do you have much uh, experience in the dashboard? Have you gone in there and clicked around? Um, I have, have some. I'm. <laughs> It's, it's still been a learning process for me, for sure. Got it, got it. Do you have an account manager? Um, do you have any marketing services with us or is it just uh, just the website right now? Um, it's mostly just the website. I think I do have an account manager. I haven't been in touch with them recently. Okay, no worries. Um, I can um, I can follow up with the exact, uh, after this, I can, I can send you an email with exact steps on how to do it, but it's super easy. Once you log into the dashboard um, and you're in the, in the website editor view, um, Wherever your page is on your site, when you in the top left-hand corner, when you go to click any part of your website, um, you'll see a live preview there of what the page looks like. And if you just use your mouse and hover around, it will, it will open up um, these little plus icons where you can add the elements. Clicking into that, you'll get access to all the elements and the data elements are gonna be a part of that too. Um, so you just type in, there's a, it, it will say neighborhood there, or you can just type in keywords to, to, to find the element that way. But once you find it, you click it, it's added to your site there and then. Um, oh, fantastic. And yeah, so it's super easy. It's, and and if you already have neighborhoods on your site, um, zoom in a little bit back out into your dashboard, into your neighborhood section is where you can you can pull in all the data. So it's, it's as easy as just searching for the location that you want to pull the data for. It'll, it'll pull it up um, and that's it. It's just going to be on the front end of your site as long as that element is added to your page. Um, and it will, it will automatically update um, and it's fully responsive and it, it changes uh, depending on if you're being on, on your mobile or, or, or desktop. Um, but within 30 seconds, you have it on your site. Very easy. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Wonderful. Yeah, and once it's set up, just to, to answer your earlier question, once it's set up, the, the data will automatically update. So we have, have these data integrations where you don't need to provide that data. It, it automatically shows up. Fantastic. And uh, a second point, if, if I may. Um, the exit intent pop-ups, is that something that I can go into my site and start to create, or is that something I need to work with a developer on? You can create that on um, in the platform. Uh, okay. Yeah, we have that feature available. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for the, the questions. Yeah. I think we have uh, maybe time for a couple more. Yeah. Angel? Uh, do you want to give it a go? I think you might be muted. Let's see if I can mute you. Oh, there we go. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. I just had a simple question if this was going to be recorded so that we can view later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll send a recording after this um, with a with a in a follow up email with some with a few resources as well. Yeah, excellent. That would be great. Okay, thank you. That's my question. Thank you. Got it. Got it. Do we have time for a few more questions in the chat? I think. Uh, oh no, we got we got a few. Oh, let me try and. I'm sorry. I'm gonna. Okay. No, that's okay. We're gonna, let's try. Uh, let's try one of the questions from the chat. Um, we had, in addition to websites, do you recommend print marketing as well to support the process? Um, absolutely. Uh, in any any and all channels that you can dedicate time to. Um, and QR codes is perfect to fit into print. You know, it's people still like that tactile feel. They still love um, holding postcards and, and flicking through magazines. 
Um, and it's just, just a good way to bridge that gap between offline and online, right? You know, everyone's always focusing on social media and videos and, and which is great. Um, but it's, it's not to ignore, not to ignore print, you know, we should still, we should still, um, dedicate whatever you can to that. I guess it just depends on your whole overall, uh, marketing strategy, your marketing budget and how much you want to put towards it. Um, Malti, did you have any thoughts on, on that? No, I think you you covered it well. I, I agree with all that. Yep. Um, do we have any more hands up? What's what are we at time? 11.45. We're still good. Let's see. Um, what's your opinion on... So this is from Gregory Frank. What's your opinion on putting up registration requirements to view properties? For example, making your site visitors feel uh, a basic form to view your listings. Okay, so like a like a gated access to your listings, right? Um, you know, it's a it's the same principle as pop ups, I guess. Sometimes, and I think with gated access, it depends on the goal. Um, if if you have gated access to your listings a little bit further down the funnel, let's say you're running some ads, and you're ready you're ready doing some marketing, and you've you put a group of listings together, and the ad itself is something like you know get access to these listings um i think it's fair at that point to put up a, a gate put up a a little form where somebody can fill out and get access to those listings um but you know in in, in other in other search tools and and wherever you have your listing showcased it, you don't have to have gate, gates either it's it's um it's just another way to capture leads uh, but if you want if leads are the goal um i would probably leave the gate off um and just allow uh, allow the visitor to, to click around on, on the property, get the information that they want, and then reach out to you whenever they feel comfortable. Um, oftentimes when people fill out the form, especially if they're top of the funnel type of leads, um, they're going to require nurturing anyway. Um, so you'll get that lead, you put into their system, into your system, um, just make sure that you're following up with them um, constantly. Uh, it, 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 they would still require nurturing. Um what do you think, Marty, on, on that one, uh, gated content for listings? Yeah, so the, the, having any type of forced registration, um, you know, generally you'll see a higher volume of leads. Um, it just tends to um, still uh, convert more of your traffic. But uh, the, the downside is that some consumers don't love it. And uh, I would agree that uh, if you're using it um, for ads and you're driving traffic to a specific landing page with a particular set of listings that you've curated um, or selected and the goal is to generate leads, then um, I would recommend some type of lead capture um, or forced registration so you can drive you know, better lead performance. Um, but if it's on your website, more generally, um, I would not put your listing portfolio behind um, behind a form. Uh, also, you know, if it's your listings, you, you obviously want to make sure that uh, you're promoting those listings to as many people as possible. Um, your sellers are going to expect that. So uh, that's why I would steer away from uh, forced registration. Yeah, hope that answers your question. Um, we have a couple hands up as well. I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your name. From Vontavius? Vontavius? Um, uh, yes, Vontavius was right. Vontavius. Okay, thank you. My my question was, do you all work with non non luxury present customers in regards to branding? Um, like if someone needed their logo and brand kit. Yeah. Um currently we we don't. Currently we um the packages we offer are for, for branding plus the website design. And the reason why we we do both is because we believe that um for, the, for your branding to be effective. It's really about the implementation. It's not just the logo, but it's how you display your branding um, everywhere. And obviously your website is a, a really critical part of that. Um, and so we work with clients when uh, it's the website plus uh, the branding offering. Thank you. Thanks, Contavious. Um, Jillian, you're up next. There we go. Hi. Um, so I'm interested in videos. Um, and I have, uh, I have a great website you guys made. I really like it, though I haven't really started to um, 
to leverage it. So you, you showed some great videos. I liked the guy at the San Francisco house. That looks very professionally made. Um, and so, and I love your idea of the case study um, and success stories. Do, how, how do we go about doing that? I mean, can I just go out with my iPhone and do something that's uh, a little bit casual and fun, or is that just really not going to be up to the luxury presence brand kind of um, quality level and I need to go out and spend some money and what kind of money are we talking about? Great, great question. Um, you know, my my approach on videos these days is it, it just has to feel comfortable and natural to you. Um, you know, as long as you're not making people dizzy <laughs> with, with your phone or walking around, just have it propped up on a coffee mug or something, just keep keep the, the camera steady. But technology phones these days, they're fantastic. The picture quality is great. The sound is great. Um, you do not need to go out and, and hire a whole production company. It's, it's more about... Um, the consistency and what you're trying to answer. Um, I, what I uh, the tip I gave uh, some of my clients was to have a, a running list in in your notes app or on a bit of paper of just questions and concerns that you're getting from your clients um, every day. You're probably talking to them on the phone. You bump into them in the street. Just um, what what do they want to know? And you can put your phone up and just answer. Just talk to it for thirty seconds. Um, it's actually more refreshing if, if it's not produced and, and highly produced. It's it's a bit more genuine. You you come across a bit more natural. Um, it's um, people get to know the real you. And I think generally online, you know, people are, are generally good judges of character. They know when you're trying to over stylize something. Um, and sometimes that works. And other times they just want to hear a quick 30 seconds uh, from you and, and how your take on it and, and your voice. Um, that's your brand. That's what people can't replicate. You know, people can go out there and, and do all these beautiful property tours and, and drone videos, but that one-to-one -one feeling of, of you just talking to a camera directly to that person that asked the question um, is, is so refreshing to see and very easy to do because you could just do it from your phone. Um, how do you feel about that? Have you done any videos in the past? So I really haven't, you know, I mean, just uh, sending happy birthday to my dad. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, so that was my next question then is, you know, as a luxury presence client, um, I think I have an account manager, though I don't think I've spoken to them. Um, is that the kind of thing that somebody could take 15 minutes and just give me the basics and show me and, and I could do some practice runs and kind of figure it out from there? I think that, you know, some of the older generation agents are just did not grow up making TikTok videos and mm -hmm. so the learning curve there would we would love a little bit of support. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think we might even have a little bit of a guide or a best practices somewhere. I'll try and dig it out for you, and I'll, I'll sync up with um with the account manager as well, so they can give you some of that information. Um, and we can always just put it into an email to you. But it's uh it's very easy to do, and and honestly, you don't even have to sh share it with the world straight away. Just start filming stuff, have it saved somewhere on your on your drive, and and um and just forward it to your account manager and see if they can figure out how to use it from that point. It's um it's a collaborative process with us, especially if you have a have an account manager that'd be great okay. wonderful thank you that's exactly what i need i appreciate it yeah um all right we have about five minutes let's see if we can get it. brad you're up yeah hey guys can you hear me yes thanks for this very helpful um would love to hear more about your um your new brand offering <clears throat> pardon me i have a cold um currently our team, uh, we're working with you all and having our site built, it should be launching within the next couple of weeks. Uh, but very curious and what, um, just more details on this, maybe you could send it to me or speak more uh, to that now. Yep, I'll let you take that one, Monty. Yeah, uh, so the new offering is, um, uh, is a, a program where uh, we can cr actually create the branding. So the branding guide color palette logos um and so forth and uh work you know closely with you on on uh, creating a visual identity um and we can share we'll share with you after uh, a deck with an overview uh, if you're already in the process of getting a website built with us um you can you know we can uh, work something out there and, and see what makes sense if you have a need for some of the branding side of it. Um, sounds like you already have the 
the website in place. So uh, we'll share that that information with you, and then uh, you can let us know if uh, if any of it is uh, uh, is something that you're interested in. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm very interested. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Um, Francesca, we can we can probably squeeze a couple more in. Hi, thank you guys so much for the time today. Um, so I was I'm working on getting my website built um, with you all, and just looking to add a little bit more meat to the neighborhoods page. Um, and so I was wondering if you're able to pull in any information um, that could not. I don't want to pull in like static numbers, but I want to pull in data from the MLS when somebody clicks on a neighborhood that would say like the average sales price in that area, um, the average days on market, like number of available listings. Is there any functionality like that um, to just like kind of add some more context to the neighborhood? Um, uh, Malti, do you want to take that one? I think from, yeah. from the MLS side, yeah. Yeah, the, this um, this is definitely uh, with the the neighborhoods data um, elements, uh, the ones that Valley was mentioning earlier. Um, that's the the tool I would I would recommend, or the feature I would recommend to do that. Um, so I, I can just ask um, like my implementation manager to add the the neighborhoods data. That's what it would be referred to as. Yeah, yeah, okay. they'll be able to add it for you. Got it. A neighborhood data element. Neighborhood data element. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Francesca. Um, all right, I know we're about time. Um, we'll probably call it here. I know there are some questions that we didn't get to in, in the chat and the Q&A, but we'll follow up with everybody in the email and you'll also get a, um, a, a follow-up email and, with the recording and, and some additional resources. Um, I think I think we'll call it there, Malti. Should we? I think that was a good one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Um, great, great chatting with you. Thanks for all the good questions. Um, we'll be doing this every other week, covering different topics. So uh, look out for the next one. Um, and uh, thanks for for joining this morning. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day.